power in the blood. Amen. 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 I'm not sure I like this Pentecostal singing <laughs> because when I got to get up and Pentecostal preach and you're fat and you're asthmatic, it makes it tough. <laughs> but I can't help myself. I just got to sing when the music's going. Woo, glory. Amen. I'm just joking. I love Pentecostal music. Amen. I saw Joan's face. She's like, we just voting our pastor out right now. If you don't like Pentecostal music, he's gone. <laughs> Love you, Sister Joan. Amen. Praise God. If you have your Bibles, if you'll turn with me to the book of John chapter 21. And we're going to read verse 3. And I'm going to be reading in the King James it's probably in modern English up there. Simon Peter said unto them, I'm going fishing. Come on. They said unto him, we'll go with thee also. They went forth, they entered into the ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. Right. They caught nothing. Lord Jesus, we love you and we thank you, God, for your spirit. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. 
Lord, I ask right now that you would anoint my voice, anoint my heart, Lord, mind, soul, strength, everything, God, that we may give it all to you. Lord, allow us to receive your word today with joy and gladness in our hearts. Let us speak to somebody in Jesus' name. Amen. If you'll preach with me, you may be seated. Amen. I want to preach for just a little while this morning on a very simple thought. Normal is calling you. When we look at this portion of scripture, Peter is saying, I'm going fishing. Well, to give you a little backstory, Peter, Peter was the son of a fisherman. So Peter's normal is fishing. Right. How many understand what a default setting is? Yeah. Right. All right. We all have one. Yeah. That's your normal. Yeah. Because we all have a comfort zone. Right? right. We all have, you know, my wife, my, my son and I, we were picking on my wife this morning because... My wife doesn't know how to sit down very well. And when she's sitting down, it's because she's sitting down in the yard plucking weeds. <laughs> and throwing the ball with the dog at the same time. That's her normal. Yeah. Yeah. I always tell her, you got you to go out and get dirt in your skirt or you ain't happy. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Peter was a fisherman. So he became a fisherman because his daddy was a fisherman. And his daddy's daddy was a fisherman. Fishing was Peter's default setting. It's what he grew up with. It's what he knew. It was safe. Amen? Here's the problem with that. God's plan for Peter was not normal. God had something so different for Peter's life. Peter had no idea. As a matter of fact, Jesus changed Peter's normal one day when he told him, follow me, and I'm going to make you fishers of men. Now, Jesus didn't reveal everything to Peter at that moment. It would have freaked him out. How many of you, let let me address these guys up here. When God filled you with the Holy Ghost, Wyatt, if the Lord says, I will make you a fisher of men, I'm going to make you a minister of the gospel, the second you receive the Holy Ghost, what would your response been? <laughs> because I remember when you came back with the Holy Ghost, when you came back, to, I, know, I know what his response would have been. It would have been like, maybe not. I don't think so. Come on. You want to know what my response was? (laughs) I felt like Abraham or Sarah, you're laughing at God in the tent. Come on. You you know, you talk about being an introvert, right? Zig Ziglar, who's one of my heroes, by the way, I, I love that guy, motivational speaker and all that. He said, I was so shy I couldn't lead silent prayer in church. I am a very shy person, but you got to get to know me to know that. Okay? Why? Because I'm a pastor. Because that's what God has called me to be. Amen? That supersedes my shyness. That supersedes my default setting. That supersedes my normal. You see, I'm not allowed to live inside my normal. If I'm going to do what God has called me to do, I have got to step outside of my normal because there is nothing normal about God. Yeah. There is absolutely nothing normal about walking with God. That's right. That's right. You're right. Amen? Amen? Nothing normal about it. Amen. Now, we as apostolics, we look at it and say, okay, this, is, this feels normal because I've been doing this for 35 years. I've been doing this for 40 years. I've been doing this for 50 years. It feels normal. If somebody walking in that back door saw you jumping up and going, there is power, 
power, wonder working power in the blood. When they're used to amaze, honk, honk, zing, grace, honk, honk. On the big pipe organs. Yeah. Holy, holy, holy. <laughs> my, there's my wife, look at that. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about. You people online, you know what I'm talking about. You think we're crazy half the time. <laughs> Come on now. Because we're not normal. We weren't called to be normal. Right. We were called to become a peculiar people. Yep, 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 yep. Now, peculiar does not mean weird. All right? See, some people, they identify peculiar as weird because that's what the world says. If you're peculiar, you're weird. No, peculiar means special. All right. That's good. That's good. Let's go. We're a special people. Yep, yep, yep. Not short bus special. <laughs> special. Valuable, Amen. treasured. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen. Follow me, and I'm going to make you a fisher. Not a fish, but a man. Right. What? Right. God's will and God's purpose for Peter's life went way beyond normal. Amen? John Flavel says, man's extremity is God's opportunity. He was a preacher back in the 1600s, just in case you guys want reference. But if normal would have played out in Peter's life, he never would have become a great apostle. Right. He would have been sitting at the meat market selling fish. Right. That would have been his normal. Performing miracles and preaching to thousands at a time. Casting out devils. Healing the sick. Come on. Huh? Taking the gospel to nations would not have been his normal. He would have been a fisherman with broken nets and broken boats and broken dreams. He never would have been able to experience what you and I experience so freely today. If he had stayed inside his normal but let me ask you something this morning, church. What are you going to do with normal? All right, let's go. You can't get ahead in this world with normal. That's right. Normal dreams, normal mindset, normal ambition, normal work ethics. You ready for something really deep here? If you're normal... You are just like everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Amen. What? How are you going to get the promotion if your work ethic is just like everybody else's work ethic? Come on now. Young people, where, where are my young well, ones out back? One's right over here. Don't do the same work ethic everybody else. You do a step ahead. Right. Now, this is going to tell you how long ago my daddy gave me this advice. He says, son, if somebody's paying you a dollar an hour to do work, and you do a dollar ten cents an hour worth of work, you will never be without a job. Right. If you are always doing above and beyond what they ask you to do, yep. you will always have work. Yep. Amen? But how are you as a businessman, Rufus, if all you did was normal? You didn't go above and beyond and do some extra trimming and clipping and, and raking up and doing and, and all the little extra cleanup things you do for your business. Right. And everybody else just leaves the stuff laying around and you do all that special, extra special stuff. You're going to get ahead and you're going to be successful in business. But people that just do the normal, just enough to get by to collect the check, they're wondering why you're going to be successful. Huh? How many people have you seen that get jealous because somebody else gets a promotion? Right, right, right. Mm. Some people, you know, some people, they, they, they think that, um, that just getting by is good enough. 
Amen? Amen. Life lessons aren't going to be made and found in all-night video game sessions. It's a disc. I'm not saying nothing against video games. Don't, don't look at me silly. Nate's over here going, oh, he's going to preach against my PlayStation. No, I've got one. <gasps> I don't think I've played it in a year, but I've got one. <clears throat> Here's the thing. You've got to go above and beyond the normal to become successful. Amen? Young people, now we got my other young person back. Normal will mess you up. Just being average, just being normal will mess you up. It will make you think that all you have to do is the bare minimum to get through in life. Yep. When you're doing the bare minimum, that's where the minimum wage comes into effect. Yep. My wife's dad said if you bought some people for what they're actually worth and sold them for what they think they're worth, Think about that. Huh? Yeah. Now, let me give you another clue. Ready for this? Big nugget here. God won't do for you what you can already do for yourself. Some people think that God is just going to miraculously set your alarm off in the morning so you can be at work all the time. No, you set the alarm. That's, right. That's your responsibility. Some people think, well, God's going to miraculously drop money in my bank account. No, get a job. Yeah. Go to work. Get your paycheck. Right. That's when money gets in your account. That's right. It's not these miraculous. Don't get me wrong. I've, I know that God has miraculously provided for people that are working, that are doing the best they can, but needed extra for whatever came by. I have seen it. I know it. I know it happens. Yeah. But don't. Go through life expecting a miracle every single day to pay your everyday bills if you ain't willing to go to work to get it. That's right. I'm becoming very, very unpopular. <laughs> Listen, I had my very first job in 1973. Now, you started counting back today. I was about five and a half years old. I had that job in kindergarten. First grade, second grade, to third grade, after third grade. If you're walking on, if you're looking online, if Andy Fishback from Hannibal, Missouri, your dad hired me in his welding shop. Every day I'd come in after school and I got paid a nickel, 10 cents, to come in and sweep out. The, first I went in just because, man, you sparks flying, and that's really, really cool. To, I mean, kindergarten, really. Every day I'd go by, though. He goes, kid, if you're going to be here, you might as well make some money here, sweep out my shop. Every day after school, before I ever got home, I stopped at Fishback Welding and I swept out the shop. Three or four years. After that, I graduated because we, we moved to a different neighborhood and in our neighborhood then, see, back, you got, some of these kids today have no idea, neighborhood groceries, okay? And we had, we had this older couple and, and I had a bicycle with a basket on it. I delivered groceries. You see, other kids my age, they were out playing baseball or out shooting marbles or out playing jacks or pickup sticks or whatever. Yeah. I like to have a little clinkage in my pocket. All right? I like the folding stuff too. <laughs> clinkage is great, but folding is awesome. <laughs> and I'm not saying this to brag, I'm just saying it. After, after I had my, my, my delivery job, I went to newspapers. I had a newspaper route. Guess what? Then I graduated by the time I got to sixth grade. I had two paper routes. I would deliver the entire downtown business district and then ended up at the paper place, collected up my next one, go up to my neighborhood, and I'd deliver up my neighborhood too. Yeah. Why? I didn't want just normal in my life. Right. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> I wanted to be able to, if I wanted something, be able to buy something. Amen? And back then, my dad was in the military, so we didn't have extra money. You got five kids on a military man's salary? No, you don't have extra money. Hear me now. 
My mom, I remember her babysitting all three shifts to bring extra money. My dad was in Korea for a year, and, and they didn't have direct deposit like they do now. That check had to be shipped from Camp Casey in Korea all the way across into the United States and from the United States all the way to that. And sometimes it just didn't make it on time. I remember times I collected from my paper route and I gave my mom my money from my paper route so we could have food on the table. Why? That doesn't sound normal for a kid. We weren't a normal family. But guess what? That's what families should do. That's what as parents and grandparents we should be teaching our kids is, hey, it's not all about self-centered. It's not all about your world. Sometimes we as Christians, we get this Holy Ghost thing and it then becomes about, I've got to feed myself. I've got to do myself. I've got to take care of myself. I've got to self-focus, 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 self-aware, 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 self-feeding, 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 self-care, self-care, self No! God didn't pour all that stuff into us just for us to take care of ourselves. We got to be beyond just what's normal. Yeah. And we got to step into the, I, I don't want to say abnormal, <laughs> but kind of. Right. Amen. Come on. Man, I've already blown through five pages of notes. <laughs> so, what, am I missing something? Okay, you're like tapping your watch. I thought maybe I'm, I'm, I'm over time here. I'm like, did I really just preach an hour? <laughs> Go above normal. Right. You see, normal shows up right on time or five minutes late. Yeah. And you know, what, what do I always teach you? Ten minutes early is five minutes late. You be there fifteen minutes early, no matter what you're doing. You're fifteen minutes early minimum, right? Why? Because the normal just gonna slip in. Yep. Let me bless you. I'm here. <laughs> right. Normal doesn't huff at their boss when he gives them something extra to do. Normal didn't want to leave early all the time. You see, when you step outside of your normal, you're there early. I was proud when Wyatt was going for his license and the district board asked me about him, about his ethic, about who he is. And I was proud when I said, Wyatt and Faith are here an hour, sometimes two hours before anybody else walks in the door. And they're here cleaning the church and setting up the equipment and getting all this turned on, getting all this. I'm, listen. I'm sorry that I'm embarrassing you. <laughs> I'm talking about stepping outside of normal. Right. See, we can come to church right on time yeah. knowing that things are going to be clicking because we have some people that are not normal. <laughs> people that are stepping outside of their comfort zone, giving up extra sleep so that we can come in and be able to have the presence of God ready when we get here. Yeah. Right. We have people in the church praying before we ever walk in the doors. Why? Because we've got to be outside the normal. We've got to be outside our comfort zone. What happens when, you, when everybody leaves? Well, guess what? There's always somebody here also to close the doors. Make sure the lights are down. Make sure the batteries are put away. Make sure the microphones are put away. Make sure the sound systems are Make sure everything is ready to go for the next service. Amen? And I'm only missing one couple, okay? Because I usually pick on the Borkatures. <laughs> they ain't normal. <laughs> that didn't quite come out the way I meant it, but you understand, they don't live in the normal. That's right, that's right. Now, many of you know Sister Borkatures is my personal prayer warrior. I know she prays. I have no hesitation, reservation, no inkling of a doubt in my mind. Every single day she's lifting up the ministry team in prayer. Every single day. I know that. I feel that. Amen? That's not normal. Normal is, well, I'll pray for my meals, and I'll pray, you know. Now I lay me down to sleep and all that, you know. 
Get outside the normal. Normal says, I'm going to read my Bible every day. Or abnormal. Getting outside the normal says, I will read my Bible every single day and maybe twice a day. Nor, getting outside the normal says, I'm going to pray every single day. Not just when I'm at church and people are looking at me. That's right. That's right. Huh? Whew. Oh, mercy. Okay. Normal will allow your kids to walk in areas that you haven't walked. Or get, getting outside the normal. I got to get that word normal out of my mouth now because it's all over the place up here. <laughs> getting outside the normal. I want my children to have a deeper walk with God than I've ever had. I want my children to experience things that I've never experienced. I want my children to have a deeper relationship, a deeper, a deeper, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't want them to think normal. I don't want them to act normal. I don't want them to love normal. I don't want them to believe normal. Why? Because I believe God has something greater in store for our kids than we have ever experienced. Why would anybody want normal for their children? I mean, what parent, when you have your little baby, all right, that little bundle of joy, the nurse hands it to you for the first time, you go, yay. He grabbed a hold of my finger. You know, kids don't usually grab your finger this early. My kid is so awesome. He's so special. Huh? My son looked at me. He looked right at me when I said his name. <gasps> they don't usually do that. Oh, he's so awesome. It, come on, parents. How many of you know what I'm talking about this morning, right? Right? My baby's so smart. <laughs> but every, every parent wants more for their kids yeah. than to be normal. How much more does your heavenly father want for you yeah. than to be normal? Right. Romans chapter 8 verse 37 says, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors. Yeah. We are not simply conquerors. Remember last week I, I, I talked about um, the, the kingdom takes by force. and We need to be for, by force by force. We need to be more than just conquerors. We need to be more than just take back. We need to take back and take back tithe. Yeah. Yeah. We need to not just regain our ground, but we need to gain our ground plus some. That's right. That's right. Right? Nobody that is a conquering army walks into a land and says, well, we got to the border. We're going to stop right here. Yeah. <laughs> the United States would not be the United States if we just got the Massachusetts Bay Colony and ended right there. Yeah. Right. Well, there's this whole vast area out here, but <laughs> me and my three and my four no more. We're just going <sighs> to. Yeah. Normal. Somebody that is more than a conqueror is not normal. They don't pray normal. Huh? They don't read their Bible normal. They don't come to church normal. They don't love other people normal. They pray all the time. And they don't just love the easy people. They love the hard people too. How many know there are just some people in your life that you go, Huh? Yeah. Don't pick on your wife anymore. You've already picked on her once. <laughs> there, I picked on her for you. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding, Sister Rachel. Look. <laughs> I honestly have had people in my life, and thankfully not in this room, but I've had people in my life that it just feels like when they walk in the room, you just sit down and you go, Oh, Jesus, how long do I have to, is this socially acceptable before I can get up and walk out of here? <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Anybody experience that besides me? <laughs> right? But guess what? 
That person has a soul. Jesus died on the cross for that person just like he died for you and just like he died for me. Amen? He didn't call us just to love the easy ones. <clears throat> so God's plan for Peter went way beyond his daddy's normal and his daddy's daddy's normal. Amen? So for the next three and a half years, Peter walked side by side with Jesus. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being there when Jesus healed some lepers? Can you imagine what the lady with the issue of blood was healed just by touching the hem of his garment? Could you imagine when Lazarus, who'd been laying in the tomb for four days and stunk, and Jesus called him forth out, and you, there, Peter's there. Walking in the magnificent. Let me tell you, he was not walking in normal when you're walking with Jesus. Three and a half years of hearing Jesus' teaching ministry. God manifest in the flesh. Can you imagine? Just imagine that for just a moment. Peter is walking in his destiny. He is living out God's promises in his life. His life is one big, amazing turnabout. Think about it. Fishing nets, walking on water. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? I mean, who would have thought that a fisherman's son, Peter, would ever amount to anything but a fisherman? Much less the one who Jesus would eventually call the rock that the church was built on. Peter's name originally was Simon. Meaning, but but uh, Jesus changed his name one day and says, you are Peter, meaning the rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Yeah. Jesus had big plans for Peter's life. And they weren't normal. But there was a price he was going to have to pay that was not normal. There were blessings he was going to see that was not normal. The call on Peter's life and his purpose would outlive him by thousands of years. You don't believe it? Who preaches and believes Acts 2.38? Guess who preached that message? It was Peter, the fisherman, the one who stepped outside of the normal. And walked in his destiny because Jesus said, I will make you fishers of men. But as it would turn out, catastrophe hit his life. What? You didn't read about that part? Jesus was caught. He was beaten. And he was crucified. What looked like a wonderful life. I mean, I, I, I've seen these blessings with my own eyes. Yeah. I, I, all of the, everything that he had seen came to a screeching halt because Jesus was crucified. Who would have thought anything like this could ever happen? Everything was going so well just a few months ago. How could this happen? None of you have ever asked that question. So in verse 21, our opening text, we see Peter, what? Going back to normal. Yeah. He went back to what is the default setting of his life because everything else in his life was hell. Right. Everything else in his life was flipped, turned upside down. Yep. And what do we do? Fight or flight. He went back to where everything was. Peter said, I'm going fishing. There is something about a catastrophe. A catastrophe will cause normal to call you out. If you're not careful, it will put you back into the place you were before Jesus found you. It will take you out of your potential. Now, we can all talk about that because since 2020, we've not been living in our normal. 
Have we? Normal has been redefined for all of us, hasn't it? Glory. And the truth is, right now, if, if we went around this room and everybody's privately talking, we all want our lives to go back to normal. We kind of like that dollar twenty-five gasoline that Pastor Nate was talking about earlier, right? We just want what we had before—the security and the relationships. And, and and but this horrible thing has happened. This catastrophe. This pandemic. Listen, this thing did not happen so we could go back to normal. There's been too much death. There's been too much cost. Too much has been paid for us to go back to normal. There's been too much sacrifice, too much hard work. Listen, when this crisis is over, I don't want my walk with God to go back to normal. I want a better walk with God. I don't want a normal relationship with my wife and my children. I want to I want to live where I'm at right now in a supernatural walk with God. Amen. And with my children. I don't want us to have normal church. Right. Listen, the church became stronger through this pandemic. This church, 304 West E Street, Hastings, Nebraska, 68901, became stronger. Some of you look around, but there's still some people that ain't come back. My wife said it best when she said this. Is it took the people who were faithful and made them more faithful. And it revealed some things in people that weren't. Now, there's some people who moved away, so don't, don't read into that. But, and I'm talking worldwide, globally. The church has become stronger. Amen. I don't want to go back to normal. I want our doors uh, wider and I want to reach more people and I want us to accomplish more things for the kingdom. I don't want normal, but I'm telling you, normal is calling you. Yeah, right. Don't answer. Don't answer. It would be easy to go back to normal. It, I'm, I, I don't know about some of you, but we're going to go to honesty real quick here. You ready for this? In normal, prior to COVID, prayer life was starting to plateau out. I'm not talking about just myself. I'm talking about church-wide. The move of God seems to have plateaued out. Relationships plateaued out. But when this thing hit, there's just a resolve that got in people's guts. Am I allowed to say guts on on this thing? (laughs) It got, hey, relationships got stronger. People's walk with God got stronger. People's prayer life got stronger. It had to or you were going to die. Amen? Normal would have been, we don't need all this audio, video equipment. We're, we're, that's normal. <laughs> now, I'm only sharing this because it's true. <laughs> I, I've, been, I've been talking about getting this Sling Studio system for several years. But we've been putting it off because it was going to be a chunk of money. But I felt in my spirit, no, now is the time we have to do it now. My wife's like, you don't have to do it now. I'm like, no, we have to do it now. And she's like, okay, we're doing it now. And we had this thing up and people trained and this thing ready to go, like what, a week, two weeks? Literally, before the pandemic hit, before we had to close our doors. And because we were able to live outside of normal, we were able to listen to the voice of God saying, get ready. Get ready. This is a simple thing. 
This is not a salvation thing here. But I think sometimes we need to remind ourselves that Jesus is get ready. Right. Hmm? Yeah. We need to be prepared ourselves too. Because normal is calling us. Don't answer. They say absence makes the heart grow fonder. That's true. When we were out for a couple of weeks, I don't even remember how long we were out. Six weeks. That was the worst six weeks I can remember living for God ever. Don't get me wrong. I prayed. I stayed in touch with God. All of that. Everything. I didn't have you, my family, for six weeks. I couldn't hug your neck. Couldn't high five. Couldn't. Amen? But I think now that we're on this side of it, we just need to learn to hug a little harder. Huh? Get to church a little earlier. Stay a little later. Get into the altars a little earlier. Stay a little later. Uh Oh, John preaching, meddling, and all that stuff. We need to worship a little bit louder. Huh? You see, the devil thought he shot the, shut the church down. Right. Woo! Come on. I can tell you, and, and I'm sharing this with you because this goes right along with what I'm saying. I have talked to several pastors this week, and I can't tell you the energy that we are feeling, the, the, the move of God that's happening in our district that's unlike anything that any of us have seen or experienced. It's more than words you're going to see. You're going to observe, church. You're going to see it with your own two eyes. I don't want normal. Normal will mess you up. Sister Rez, would you come? Listen, and you can stand if you'd like. I don't don't want to go back to normal, Nate. I don't want it in my life. I don't want it. But Peter went back to normal. He said, I'm going fishing. The sad part is, not only did he go fishing, but it's almost like, who's going with me? You see, the devil, he don't want to just drag you back to normal. He wants you to drag a few people with you. Right. Because it wasn't Peter going fishing by himself. It's kind of like, okay, John, you get the nets, I'll get the boat. Let's go back fishing. Let's go back to normal. And you know what that got them, right? Matt, can you pull up uh, John 21.3? When they entered into the fish, into the, no, 21.3, sorry. There we go. They went out, entered the boat, but that night they caught nothing. I wonder sometimes if they had brought in all those fish on their own, would they have trusted in God again? Or would they have stayed in that normal? Would they have stayed on the boat? Normal got them nothing. Normal got them no direction from God. No miracles, no blessings, no money, no no food to eat. Now let's drop down to verse 4. At dawn, Jesus was standing on the beach. But the disciples couldn't see who he was. Now, here's the sad part. When he called out, they didn't even recognize his voice. Fellows, have you caught any fish? They said no. Verse 6. Now, here's a dude standing on a beach. 
And he says, cast your net on the other side. But Lord, we normally throw our nets on the left-hand side. And we normally don't let somebody standing on a beach tell us how to fish. We're fishermen. Yeah, I know, guys, but do it different this time. Be willing to go that extra. Be willing to cast that net extra. And don't expect just a normal catch. Verse 6. Throw your net out on the right side of the boat and you'll get some. So they did. And they couldn't haul in the net because there were so many fish in it. God is something better than normal for us. But he also expects something better than normal from us. John 14, 12, last scripture says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done. But he'll do greater works. Because I am going to be with the Father. God doesn't expect you just to do what he did. He wants you to have greater works, greater things, greater things. Step outside the normal. Thy precious voice.